Today here at Lights and Buttons, we will be troubleshooting a subwoofer problem. In this home theater, as you can see, we have two subs, one on the left and one on the right. And we will be looking at the left one because it's making a random thumping noise once in a while. So this thumping slash popping noise happens when the sub is actively on. Um, but I also noticed that when I unplug the input, AKA the RCA cable and nothing else is connected to it, it still makes that sound randomly. I can't establish a pattern. And so after talking with the uh, BIC America tech support, um, they also narrowed down to a, an amplifier problem. Right now, it looks like we need an amplifier replacement, but you know, if we can see anything obvious jumping out at us and it's simple to fix without a replacement, that would be my first choice. Otherwise, from what I've heard, it won't be that much to replace the amplifier compared to the whole cost of buying a new sub. We have 10 different screws around the edges to remove and then this will pop out. All right, and here's the last screw. And like my one friend said, don't forget to turn it on to drain the capacitors. That way you avoid getting shocked. Unfortunately, the back panel is not budging. I'm not sure what's holding in the amp. So I'm gonna try to see if I can come in through the front Okay, we got the eight screws out and don't mix this up with the back screws. They are different. So this looks like a plastic trim that seals the uh, sub box, I guess. And this reveals eight more screws. And I think this time it will remove the uh, actual driver. Back to work. The driver is now out. Let's take a look at the inside. As you can see, the amp is in the back. All right, so I'm gonna push on what looks like to be a heat sink. I'm gonna have my hand in the back just so that I can catch it if it does pop out. Or at least it didn't glue this to the back. Be careful with the wires, especially with the positive and negatives. I'm gonna try to see if I can disconnect them. For the cable, I think the hardest part is just unplugging it and finding the tab that will release it. So on the curly side, and I don't know if this is like a spade connector or what the term is for these, there's a little tab you can press to release the cable and finding that and hitting that part, it can be tricky. All right, and we have another day of fun. So after that first attempt in trying to fix the amp, I tried to blow dust away. I figured maybe some of the factory dust might be conductive. I know it was a bit of a stretch, so I figured something that's free, if I can fix it, that's even better. But unfortunately, it didn't do anything. So I went ahead and ordered the amp. The amp comes with the power supply. I was actually talking with my dad and he said that the power supply might be defective, uh, causing noise to be generated in the amp and then you know, out to the, uh, the woofer itself. So. Um, everything comes in this box, the amp, the power supply, the rear panel, and I think the wiring as well. So let's open it up and check it out. Looks like everything is nicely packaged. Of course, got the back plate, power supply, and then these will go to the driver. Uh, the ones that are currently in the sub, the positive cable isn't coming out easily, so I might unplug it from the driver's side, which is a little bit annoying because then I have to unscrew the stuff in the front and then pull out the, uh, the driver and the, or the trim in the driver. Mm. Don't make the same mistake as I did. Going through this the first time, I didn't realize that when you pull out the back panel, you can tilt it in different ways. So my first method was to tilt it this way, and then of course, the wire was pretty much maxed out and I can't go any further. And I didn't want to, want to risk damaging it, so I took out the pieces out in the front. But instead of doing that, if you flip the panel this way, you get a lot more room because the wires are on this side of the panel. And as a matter of fact, I can see right through and I see the connections to the driver. And if I reach my hand in, I can unplug it from the other side because it's kind of stuck on this side. And I'll make things much easier because you don't have to take out anything from the front and mess with the screws out in the front of the sub. So all we have to do is plug the cables back in and screw the rear panel back on.
that's it for today's video thanks for watching hopefully this is helpful if you're running into the same situations with your f12s don't forget to like share and subscribe as always and i'll see you next time